You never even really dream of playing in the NBA. The NBA really feels so far-fetched. There's, what, 4,500 uh, student athletes playing, only 60 get drafted. I obviously had that dream and that hunger, but I knew my journey was going to be a little bit different. You're always going to have adversity and challenges, and it's how you bounce back and handle those things. The tattoo on my leg says the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of convenience, but in times of challenge and controversy. I grew up in Wollongong. It's a little coastal town. It's not really known for its basketball. I wasn't one of these kids that was highly sought after and went to, you know, Duke or one of these big blue schools. I went to a smaller school, I went to Winthrop, and it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. From a freshman, I got to play substantial minutes. When you play minutes, you kind of learn from your mistakes and you learn on the fly, and that's really the best way to go about it than sitting on the bench. My college career was good, but it wasn't good enough to make it to the NBA. It wasn't my, my next step in life, I guess you could say. I knew that while I was young, it was probably my best chance to go overseas and like, explore over there and play over there. And in Germany, they're a lot bigger than the Australian League, and they're, good. they're not as fast-paced, but they're physical. It really helped me grow in my game and just being physical. Playing for the Boomers is pretty important to me. Just for what it represents and being, you know, putting that country on your chest, it means a lot. So that was really the main goal for me, to get to the Boomers. And then I was invited to the squad. A lot of my development came when I was playing over in America or I was playing in, uh, in Germany. And a lot of the Australian audience really didn't see my growth and what I was doing. And even coming into the camp, I was pretty much the dark horse. I really approached the camp pretty fearlessly. You know, I had nothing to lose at that stage. And uh, I was the young guy, no one knew anything about me, no one knew any of my scouting reports. And then I started getting there, had one good day, and your confidence started rolling, have another good day. And... Yeah, I mean, after the camp finished, uh, we always do, we go to like an exit meeting kind of thing with all the coaching staff. I remember getting in there, and my first thing was saying just thank you guys for the opportunity. I had a great time, a great learning experience, and thank you guys. They ended up asking me how I think I went. I told them I was pretty solid, like I was better than I thought I was going to be. Obviously, probably still not good enough to make in the team. And they ended up saying like, actually, we, we all put you in our team. We think you did a great job, Xavier. We can't wait for you to, to represent this country in the World Cup. I was just like in shock. Ended up getting back to my room and it was kind of like, like that scene from Pseudo Happiness where he finally gets the job and he's just sitting there like this. I remember just, my emotions were unbelievable. That was probably the, at the time, my highest moment in my basketball career where I really felt proud of myself. My first training camp was over in Perth, and I remember the, the long flight over there, I was so excited. Even the whole time I was excited just to call these guys my teammates, the Paddy Mills, and now we're teammates, now we're, we're boys. And then, um, man... <laughs> It was probably five minutes into the warm-up of the very first training. I, I take a bad fall, and I really thought it wasn't too bad at the time. I thought I could just, you know, shake it out a little bit. I've come too far to let it be serious. And then they tell me that I've done my meniscus in my knee. I won't be able to play. My very first training, my very first taste of it, and it gets taken away that quickly, it was, it was heartbreaking. That was probably the lowest part of my, my basketball career, just from just the roller coaster of getting so high and so emotional about making the team to get it all taken away so quickly and just overall warm up drill. The Olympics are every four years and the World Cup's are four years as well, so you only have a short window to make it, and then if you don't make it, you gotta wait another two years for your time. And that was another heartbreaking thing just because I felt pretty far from making though, that level again. That was probably one of my first major times to, to, to face controversy and challenge and see how I was going to face it. Probably since I was 17, I really never had any downtime for basketball. And then for the first time when I got injured, it, it all came to a stop. It was a really difficult time, but it was also a blessing in disguise. So that was probably the first time I had extended time back in Wollongong to see my friends and family. And, So then I thought, maybe it's my time to come back home and play in Australia and play in front of my family and friends. Then the team I joined, then we already had Andrew Bogut, Jay Sean Tate, Casper Ware, a lot of superstars on the team already. So the way I tried to approach it was just fill a role, come in there and be a guy that's going to help win games and not be the superstar. A year after that, Andrew Bogut retired, a lot of guys retired. Uh, some of the guys went to the NBA, and I felt like it was my time to shine. 
After so my relatively healthy season, I go to the Boomers camp in California. I really struggled that camp. I don't know, I just had a bit of pressure on myself. And um, they called me and they said, yeah, unfortunately you didn't make it, but you're one of the reserves this year. I stayed around to help them train. After the camp, we go to Vegas and start playing practice games. And it was awesome to be a part of playing Team USA and beating them. I remember I actually got on the court for about five minutes. I ended up getting a dunk and Kevin Durant was, it was pretty far off, but he's still in the photo, so I can tell my daughter when I'm older that I dunked on Kevin Durant. I mean, it really didn't sink in that I didn't make the team until there's like a, a ceremony. Everyone gets their jerseys on stage. It was tough and I even remember Paddy came up and gave a spiel about um, what it means to play for the Boomers. He goes through and talks about all the players that's come through here. I was pretty emotional just, you know, seeing the, the, the faces of all the players, how the joy they had of making it to that next level and all their dreams coming true and how close I've come again to my dreams and I fell short. I pretty much flew from that ceremony back to quarantine. Boomers have always had a pretty tough time. I think we made it to the bronze medal game maybe three times and lost. But when you're sitting in a hotel room by yourself, watching the team that you didn't make succeed at that level, I was just sitting there just burning away. And I eventually I got an exercise bike, some weights, and I'm in there, you know, just doing push-ups in the room by myself, getting it sweaty, and just, I came out real hungry. That was probably the most motivating time in my life. The way I attacked that season is really try to be one of the guys. My momentum started to shift a little bit, my confidence started to grow, and my, my talent started to expand. From there, I had a really good NBL season. We won the championship, I got finals MVP, and that's when it's starting to turn around. And then from there, the next season, I really built that consistency factor up and my confidence started to grow and I ended up getting the MVP, which means I was the most valuable player out of all the players, you know, the imports and locals, which meant a lot to me, just so that I knew I was at that level. To me, like the boomers were like dreaming for the clouds, whereas the NBA was like the start. Never really thought I could get there. My agent, and probably since college, he's been in my ear saying, you're this close, you're this close, you're this close. And eventually I told him, hey man, I don't want to hear about me being this close until I'm actually at the door. Long days and late nights, I sacrificed them date nights. I sacrificed them clubs, held it down to I could take flight. And then my agent called me and told me I've got some news. I think he'd be going to the um, Washington Wizards. It was an unbelievable feeling. Once I got there, it was, it was the best thing in the world. It was the highest level of basketball. The best thing is those kind of things in life that you put on a pedestal, once you finally get there, they're not, they're not really that great. The NBA is not like that. It's hard to put into words, something that you, you dread for and work so hard for. The first game was against Della Vadova. Even before the game, we, we talked for about 20 minutes just about how to approach it and just to be yourself out here and congratulations and like you deserve to be here to so go out there and show it. And that's when it really sunk in. First game I played substantial minutes was against Giannis and that's when I knew that it was real. And you know, seeing one of the best players in the world right in front of you was pretty tough and it was pretty exciting at the same time. He's got a pretty similar game style to me. He's just better at everything. So it was pretty cool to, you know, try to learn from what he does well, what you can try and bring to your game. And obviously, I, you know, I can't grow three inches overnight, but I can try and use some of his tools. Dad always told me, like, basketball is a game, but it's also your profession. You've got to treat it as such. It's when that hunger starts to come again. To be honest with you, I'm not even at my peak yet, I don't believe. I think I've got a long way to go. There's so many players around the world that are hungry to get there, and once you're there, you gotta keep that same kind of hunger to maintain that, to maintain the job, pretty much. The next goal for me is to, uh, you know, represent Australia, have that Australia across my jersey. Not just be represented, but be a, a contributor out there, and you know, help Australia achieve its dreams. We obviously, we got the bronze medal last time around, but our real goal is to get gold and show that we can be one of the best countries in the world in basketball. I knew my journey was gonna be a little bit different. It hasn't always been pretty. Finally, you know, in this last 12 months, it's starting to work out for me. The tattoo on my legs are uh, Martin Luther King quote.
It's easy to have a smile when things are going your way, but in life, you're always going to have adversity and challenges, and it's how you bounce back and handle those things.